on a, a well-known passage, but we're excited to hear a fresh um, word from God for us this morning with through you, Alan. Thank so, you. Holy Spirit, I thank you um, that you long to speak to us through Alan this morning. I thank you for his dedication to relationship with you and to learning and um, to sharing that with us and just pray that you'd speak through him. Amen. Oh, good morning. Um, i going to speak today on the life-giving gifts of the Spirit uh, because I believe that's what the gifts are. They give us life. And I'm going to be looking at 1 Corinthians 12 verses 1 to 11. Um, a common theme or, or, or word that's been coming through uh, that I've been hearing is that we haven't been this way before. Or uh, what has got us to this place or this point will not get us to where we're going. Now you can either panic about that or you can get excited uh, because that means we need more of God, more of the Holy Spirit, and we need the guide, guidance of, of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And uh, this series, I believe, is about uh, reconnecting with our guide, our, our, the one who's come, called to come alongside us, the Holy Spirit, to help us to get to where we need to go to. Um, Jesus described the Holy Spirit, uh, next slide, as another counselor like me. In other words, the Holy Spirit is like Jesus. Um, when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and remind you of everything I have told you. So if we're not sure what's happening, Jesus says, I've, I've given you someone to come alongside. And the Holy Spirit, who is God, is here to help us to do that. So we need the Holy Spirit. Absolutely, and the Holy Spirit is Jesus here with us to help us to be like Jesus. So I just want you to say out loud, the Holy Spirit is here to help me to be like Jesus. The Holy Spirit is here to help me to be like Jesus. Okay, is that a good thing? Yeah, yeah. okay, good. My focus today is on the gifts of the Spirit. Now, I'm looking at nine, but reality is there are hundreds. There are hundreds. Now, you may want to debate that with me, but I, I just want to... We've heard some expressions of them this morning. I believe there are hundreds of gifts, but I'm going to focus on nine today just to get us starting. My first encounter of the Holy Spirit was, and this is an example of a different gift, uh, someone spoke in tongues. And that something ignited in me that I wanted more of the Holy Spirit. I wanted an encounter with the Holy Spirit. I'd not had that kind of encounter. I'd never experienced that kind of gift before. And uh, as I stood there in that moment, the Holy Spirit released a gift within me. And that gift was the ability to play the piano by ear. I'd learned to play the piano just by music, and I couldn't play the piano in any other way up to that point. It wasn't that I wasn't able to play the piano, I could, but I couldn't play it by ear, and the Holy Spirit just released that in that moment. And that was an it's like a gift of tongues in some ways. It's a different language, it's music. And that led me into a, a place of worship over coming weeks that I'd never been before. And worship was such an important access for me, a place to come and to meet with Jesus. And I believe that's what the gifts do. They help us to meet with Jesus. They reveal Jesus to us. They help us to walk closer with Jesus. And as I was worshiping, weeks later, I received the gift of tongues. And that's my beginning of my journey. And wherever you are on that journey, I believe that, that God wants to bless us, surprise us, to release to us gifts that help us to be more of who he wants us to be. So I'm going to ask Joy just to read that passage for us. You may just be able to make out the words on the screen. Now, dear brothers and sisters, regarding your question about the special abilities the Spirit gives us, I don't want you to misunderstand this. 
you know that when you were still pagans, you were led astray and swept along in worshipping speechless idols. So I want you to know that no one speaking by the Spirit of God will curse Jesus. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another, and to someone else, the the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles, and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. That's 1 Corinthians 12, 1 to 11. So the first thing I want to draw to your attention is the word spiritual. The chapter starts with a key idea that we are spiritual beings, that we are spiritual. And that's very important that we recognize that. Um, And it it reads, now this is the New American, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware. Uh, That's 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1. And then in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1, it says, Pursue love, yet desire earnestly spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. The word gifts is not there in both of those passages. It's better that it's concerning the spiritual things or concerning the spiritual. If you like, uh, we could say concerning the spiritual or the outbreathing of the Spirit's life in you, it's more about our relationship with God than it is about the gifts. That's the focus. And so when we're looking at these spiritual gifts, we are actually more interested in where the person that they come from. That is where our attention should be. Uh, There is a supernatural impartation that God wants us to receive so that we can step into a different place, into a different realm, if you like. Paul highlights, particularly to this um, group of people in Corinth, that the gifts do not equal maturity. They don't tell, tell you that you are special above anyone else. We're all special, but they don't make you any more special than anyone else. They don't make you more important. The gifts are there to help us. They're not there to make us proud. They're there to release us into what God has and to bring the importance of that relationship with God into a a deeper place where we can outbreathe that supernatural life and dynamic relationship that we have with God. The supernatural is something, some people don't like that word and I understand why. Uh, It may have connotations beyond what you may be comfortable with. But it's that which is beyond or not subject to the natural order of things. And that defines who God is. He's He's not subject to the natural order of things. He made them, but he is beyond those things. He is supernatural. And scripture is full of supernatural stories. We've got many stories here that are supernatural. You can't explain them. They're beyond explanation. How can you explain about getting a hot chocolate? I mean, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever, except that God loves us and wants to break into our world. If you were to take the supernatural out of the Gospels and Acts, there wouldn't be a lot much left of those passages. Uh, If you were to take the supernatural out of our lives, actually our lives are fairly normal and mundane and boring, and God doesn't want us, our lives to be mundane and boring. He wants them to be full and abundant, full of life. And that's what the gifts are there for, to help us. And the most important gift 
is that we mature in love. That's 1 Corinthians 13. It's lovely. It's got the meat in between 12 and 14 in 1 13. And, and that is what is the most important thing that our love, that everything we do moves towards love for God and love for one another. We tend to separate gifts of the Spirit and the gifts of the fruit of the Spirit, but I just want to say that actually they're both of the Spirit. We receive the gifts of love, faithfulness, or the, the gifts that we read about, the, the fruit of the Spirit we read about in Galatians 5, verse 22. They're half of the Spirit, just like the gifts are of the Spirit. It's impossible to heal someone without the Holy Spirit. It's impossible, equally true, to grow in the fruits of love without the Holy Spirit. They are together express the kingdom of God. So that should put in you a desire to be more full of the Holy Spirit. So I want you to say to me, I want to be continually full of the Holy Spirit. I want to be continually full of the Holy Spirit. Okay, I'm not totally convinced by that, but anyway, that'll do for starters. <laughs> So, we are spiritual. The second thing I want to point out from this passage is these gifts are a sign of God's generosity, that he is generous, that the Holy Spirit imparts a variety of gifts, many gifts, different kinds of spiritual gifts. And the word here, the gift, the word for gift here is charisma, which is where we get our word charismatic from, the gifts of the Spirit. We are a charismatic church. We should be showing the gifts of the Spirit. Um, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. They're grace gifts. They're not earned. They come out of God's generosity towards us. They're not an indication, as I've said already, of our maturity, but they're an indication of God's generous, kind, undeserved favors to us. No one is disqualified. You may not feel like you deserve a gift this morning, that's irrelevant because God is generous. It's not about whether I deserve something or not. It's his generosity moves towards us continually. And true generosity doesn't take account of what a person deserves because no one in this case is, is disqualified or has to earn a gift. Paul sets out in Galatians, the epistle of grace, uh, this which again, challenges this, I believe, um, verse, chapter 3, verse 2. Let me ask you this. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Of course not. You received the Spirit because you believed the message you heard about Christ. How foolish can you be? After starting your new lives in the Spirit, why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort? That's a that's quite bold statement. And I think that's a challenge to us. How often are we trying to grow in our relationship with God or in our maturity and character and so on and so forth without the help of the Holy Spirit? Paul is saying, that's nonsense. You can't do it. We need the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit to do, to do this. So again, I want you to say, I am qualified to receive spiritual gifts. I am qualified to receive spiritual gifts. Amen? Amen. Good. There was a bit more conviction there, yeah. <laughs> now the third point I want to, to, to raise is that this is for everyone. Okay, so look at the person next to you and say, this is for you. Okay, it's for everyone, for everyone. A spiritual gift is given to each of us. That's verse 7. That is that everyone can receive. There is no exception. Now, interesting, the word gift is actually not here in this, this particular um, The spiritual gift is given. It's not the word gift, but manifestation which means to display or shine forth like the sun breaking through the clouds.
The manifestations of the Spirit are a shining forth of God, displaying some aspect of his glory, his rule, his kingdom. The gifts of the Spirit are exercised by people who outbreathe the Spirit and show his shining forth of his glory. Okay? That's what we're doing when we express those gifts. We're shining forth. Now, you may not feel like it, but I think if we could expect that, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Shining forth. Glory. That's an expression. It's a manifestation of the kingdom. It's a manifestation of the Spirit of God. So glory is, is the divine presence, whether it is a face shining when we see Stephen being stoned, or some inner hidden strength, or water into wine that talks about glory, uh, of healings, of miracles, of righteousness, of peace, of joy. It's a manifestation. It's a manifestation of glory, of shining forth of God in our lives and through our lives. We are, each of us, the temple, the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Each of us. That is amazing. That's not just a nice idea. That is a transforming, amazing gift and release in our lives. That's a wow thing. Smith Wigglesworth said this, you can do more with the Holy Spirit in one year than 50 years without the Holy Spirit. Perhaps you could even reduce it even more than that if you wanted to. So just close your eyes and hold out your hands for a minute. It's not that I need more of you in this room, it's that I welcome you to release your glory in and through my life. I say I welcome you, Holy Spirit. I ask you to come and to unlock gifts that reflect Jesus to those around me. I ask that your presence, that I would be aware every moment more and more of you working in and through me. That the gifts you release would just help me to be more of the person you've made me to be. the most important thing we can do in the whole of today is just say yes like that there's something of his glory resting on each one of us in this moment and he's saying yes to you he's also wanting you to then express that gift that manifest his glory Which takes me to my next point. That the gifts are given for the common good. The purpose of the gifts is to help others. It's to help one another. I've written something here and I can't see it. Just a minute. Oh yeah. There has been, in my experience, a sense whereby, you know, particularly men love to show off and, and gather the electronic gadgets. Um, and, you know, the latest thing used to be the latest phone, but I think they're fairly much the same these days. But the latest gadget, um, gifts of the spirit are not like that. They're not for showing off. When we look at Jesus, 
We see him using these gifts in all kinds of places and in all kinds of ways. And they're not always, in fact, they're not often in the synagogue. They're at home. They're with his disciples. They're with friends. They're in society. And so the gifts of spirit aren't really primarily to be used in the, in the church here, in this meeting here. They are to be used in and out, within and without. They're for the common good. So that means if it's for the common good, it's not just for us. It's for the whole world. We tend to think that the gifts of the Spirit are just for us to do what we do in this room. But I believe that Jesus wants us to express those gifts every day in the relationships and the people that we meet. They're the means by which God manifests or reveals or communicates his power, his knowledge, his word to us as his people, through us to the world, to demonstrate his kingdom, his rule, exercising his goodness in someone's life, a believer or not. Now imagine, I've done, seen this happen many times, imagine an unbeliever is healed or given a, a word of prophecy. Wouldn't that be amazing, okay? It doesn't mean they'll change their lives. I've, I've seen people healed who are not Christians and they just think it's amazing, but it hasn't changed their lives. And I feel sad about that, but they have had an encounter with God. They have met with Jesus. What they do with that is, in, is left with them, like Jesus often did leave people's decisions to them. And they walk away. But imagine how many others will actually receive that gift of healing or that word and it will change their lives because they have met with Jesus. That's what the gifts are for. Paul gives an example of two gifts that should be used in the church in 1 Corinthians 14. And he tells us how they should be used. And I'd like to suggest that that is an example for us about how the gifts should be used generally. Not, it's just an example of how it can be used in church, but actually they apply generally. So the words um, that he's expressing there are giving us an example of how we can bring those gifts for the common good. Now, you check out, when you have time, where Jesus actually used the gifts that he had. And you'll find that it wasn't often in the synagogue. So you, I'll leave you to do that. But he did it. He used gifts for the common good. I want to just now go through the nine spiritual gifts. Um, these gifts of the Spirit are just nine, but they open the door to the super, of, of the supernatural to reveal Jesus in ways that we cannot achieve by our own method. And my prayer is that you will resonate with at least one gift this morning that you'll receive it, that you'll acknowledge it, and that you'll unwrap that gift. You'll, you'll explore what that gift means for you. Uh, there's no reason why you can't personally access each of those gifts at any time, but I'd just like you to focus on one this morning and just allow God to unwrap that for you. So just for a moment to say, yes, okay. Just close your eyes and say, yes, okay, I want you to unwrap, to release a gift into my life this morning. And just help me to understand it and release it into my life. So that I can see, that I can hear, I can feel and sense things in a whole different way. And show me what to do with that gift. Show me how to value and treasure that gift, but to use it, not bury it and hide it. In Jesus' name, amen. So I believe the gifts of the Spirit should be expressed in the same way that Jesus did. The purpose of prophecy in 1 Corinthians 14 is to strengthen, to build up, to encourage, that is to guide alongside, and to comfort, that is to support. 
And I believe that is how we should be expressing all of the gifts, not just prophecy, but all of the gifts, to strengthen, encourage, and comfort. All ministry in the Holy Spirit should demonstrate that what Jesus is like, that he is good, he is loving, he is kind, that he is good news. Our responsibility when we receive a gift is to use that gift wisely, kindly, lovingly, to strengthen, encourage, and comfort. If it doesn't do that, and it's worth checking out when you give a gift to someone, you release something. If it doesn't do that for them, then maybe you need to go back. You're trying too hard, and you need to go back and ask God, well, how can I do this better? Because I want it to be a reflection of Jesus to this person. Sometimes I get uh, something from God that I can feel a bit like Charlie Brown from the Peanuts comic strip. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Yeah, not everyone, <laughs> some of you. Um, Charlie Brown, is a, he's the caricature, a caricature of the average person. Um, and he's always getting things wrong. Or he's not real, quite measuring up, or he doesn't think a lot of himself. Anyway, he's in this particular comic strip, he's lying on the ground with his friends, Lucy and Linus. And they're gazing at the sky, looking at the clouds, and just enjoying, a bit like today, the beautiful weather. And they're gazing into the clouds, and Lucy says, if you use your imagination, you can see lots of things in the cloud formations. Then she turns to Linus and says, what do you see? And Linus responds, well, those clouds up there, they look like to me a map of the British Honduras in the Caribbean. And that cloud there looks a little bit like the profile of Thomas Eakins, the famous painter and sculptor. And over there, those clouds remind me of Stephen being stoned. And there's, over, just over there, there's Apostle Paul watching as he's being stoned. And uh, Lucy responds, mm -hmm. that's very good, Linus, very good. So, Charlie Brown, what do you see? He said, well, I thought I saw a ducky and a horsey, but I'm not sure I want to tell you that now. And that is what I feel like sometimes when someone gives a gift and I think, okay, well, my ducky and horsey doesn't really measure up to that, so I won't bother. And I want to suggest that actually you may, that may be what it feels like, but maybe someone needs to hear about the ducky and the horsey. In fact, probably a lot of my ducky and horsey pictures have healed more people than the clever ones. Okay, so... If you feel like Charlie Brown, say, okay, I feel like Charlie Brown, but I'm still not going to give up saying what I've got. And maybe that will grow as I do it. Okay, so I want you to say, I can do this. Even if I feel like Charlie Brown. <laughs> okay? We agreed on that? Fine. So in this passage, we identify nine gifts that reflect who God is to us. And, and this is just a demonstration of how, to, how you can categorize the gifts. Uh, I don't want you to get too caught up with, with the definitions, but what they demonstrate is that you can see um, how each gift has a specific way of representing God, his omniscience, his omnipresence, his omnipotence. Uh, but basically... They are showing who God is like, who Jesus is like. And so whether it's wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discernment, tongues, interpretation, these gifts are often described as the gifts that display the fullness of Jesus' ministry, his power, his character, his knowledge, his love, and the glory of God. But I don't want us to get so caught up with that. I want us to actually, I, it's important that we know that the gifts are there for that purpose. But I think what we need to understand is 
that we need to grow in those gifts. So let's not get too caught up in it, but nonetheless, it's there. I've actually looked and identified, you may be able to set your competition if you like, I've identified at least 25 gifts in the New Testament. Uh, I think, like I said earlier, there are hundreds. And I think even if we all express the one gift in this room today, it would have different ways in which each of us would bring that gift. So it wouldn't look the same. You might even say it, doesn't, it isn't the same. So I think we need to accept that there are many more gifts than what I'm talking about here. So the first one is wisdom. Wisdom is a revelation of God's purpose in some special and specific area with the ability to speak into that area or that issue with a plan, a way forward, an answer that unlocks a situation. This gift is often quite unassuming. It comes from someone that probably we weren't expecting it to come from. Um, and it's often recognized by others rather than something the person who brings it imposes. They don't, it's not often, I don't hear people saying, I've got a word of wisdom for you. It's not usually given in that way. It's usually someone is responding and they, they share something that just unlocks something very simple. I was inspired as a teenager by the story of King Solomon to pray every day uh, in my younger years for wisdom and understanding. And I realized from the response of others that, that uh, it's a gift that God has given me. Many situations I can see that need, I can see what needs to be done. Um, it seems so obvious to me. I can sense and feel what is right and wrong. Um, it seems so obvious that I think it's not worth sharing. But when I share it, people say, wow, what's that about? Um, so I realize that gift has been used in me, but that, uh, it's, I'm not, it's not my gift. Other people have that gift as well, but it it's often doesn't seem that surprising until you get the response from someone saying, I'd never seen it like that. Jesus constantly demonstrates the, this gift in the way he responds to situations, particularly in his use of questions. And I think wisdom questions can be really good. So these questions that we get every week, they can be wisdom questions that unlock things for us. Knowledge. The Spirit reveals facts that are generally unknown. That is what I believe the gift of knowledge is. Uh, and I can feel a bit like Charlie Brown in this, uh, where I get, I get something, a gift of knowledge, and it feels very simple, but simple can be good. So if you get a word of knowledge about something that looks very simple, maybe you need to share that, and that will unlock something. Um, I remember t uh, someone telling a story about the first time they, they tried this gift. They'd never um, done it before, and, and uh, they, they felt God say, well, just make it up. So they went up, and, and they shared it in a meeting like this, and they just made it up. Someone's got something or other, and I can't remember the exact words, um, but they felt a bit stupid, but they, they did it anyway. And uh, there was a person in the meeting that uh, had a particular problem, and they, they said to, to God, they said to themselves and to God, I'm not going to respond unless they use these precise words. And this person used these precise words, and they were healed. So, okay, I just, just put that one out there, that sometimes the gift can come in a way that you're not really quite expecting. I know people who get downloads of formulae from heaven for their work situations. Now, I can't even imagine how they do that. I probably wouldn't even understand the language, let alone. Uh, so that's where I feel like a Charlie Brown. Uh, but normally we see people having words of knowledge about personal facts or details, diary details, name, phone number, that kind of thing, that release a healing or demonstrate that God knows and cares for that person. It's also, in my experience, the most poorly used gift, because I think it can expose people. So we need to be careful about the way we operate, particularly in this gift. 
Jesus uses this gift to open hearts like with Zacchaeus and the woman at the well. Faith. I'm going to try and run through the last few here. <laughs> Faith is that special ability to believe for something extraordinary, a confidence that something will happen that has no bearing in reality at this moment. It's not positive thinking. It's not simply trusting that Jesus is in control, whatever happens, but it's stepping into an alternate reality where we see things differently. I've experienced this uh, particularly when uh, we had problems with uh, cars being bro broken into outside our house. Uh, and I just saw a boundary, created a boundary. And after that point, no cars were broken into. So it's like you have a gift of faith. You see something and it becomes a reality. Jesus does this with Lazarus when he dies. Healing. I'm going to talk about this later in the series, but this is uh, an amazing ability to uh, release uh, healing into people's lives. Uh, and I've seen that in amazing different ways, so I'm not going to talk about that now. But uh, there are folk here, my conviction this morning is there are folk here who have this gift and are really good at it this morning. And you need to begin to express that gift. You need to start using it. Miracles are supernatural intervention in natural things, like creating or releasing jobs, weather, where Jesus stilled a storm, stopping an army, the sun stopping, walking on water, raising the dead, deliverance. And I think some people here have been praying for things in society, and have you seen change? We may never hear about it, but I want to encourage you to continue to press in, because you are actually doing miracles as you... You're releasing miracles. It's a gift you have. Prophecy is a word of counsel and encouragement. It's always encouraging, never exposing. Never creates a sense of fear. I've seen words like uh, that have prepared, prepared us for events like COVID and signposts that have helped us to navigate through difficult times. Um, pr prophetic words can also help us to see who we are and what might be possible. And I've received words that really helped me to be who I need to be. Uh, so pr prophecy comes in lots of different ways. And we see Jesus prophesying in many different places. Discernment um, can be one of the ones that is misunderstood in my experience. It's an insight into what motivates certain reactions. So a person may manifest, and the gift of discernment is the ability to tell whether that is a trauma, them, something God is doing, or demonic. Now, I've just given four examples of it, what it could be, but it may be more complex than that. And so discernment helps us to read misleading information and actually come to the understanding of what is real and what is true. Jesus, again, often expressed that gift. And then the last two are around tongues. These are a spontaneous and supernatural utterance in the language not previously learned. It can be and mostly is a heavenly language, which we develop with use. And I found personally that I've, I've recognized that I have more than one heavenly language, depending on how I'm praying or how I'm speaking to God. Um, but it can be an earthly one. There are missionaries who've gone overseas expecting to speak the language when they get there, and some did. Not many, but some did. Um, I think personal gift of tongues to, is towards God, and our, it's our focus is on Jesus. And it helps to build up my spirit. I pray when I don't have the words and it helps me also to change unhelpful thinking. And I've realized recently, and you may have known this for years, but I've realized recently that I can speak tongues in my head, just like I think in my head. And that's been wonderful and helpful, so I don't have to speak out loud when I'm in a, in a difficult situation. I can actually express that gift all the time. And I find that has, can significantly improve our mental health, is my suggestion. Interpretation of tongues is the ability to understand and then speak out the sense and significance of a message in tongues. 
I think when we're speaking in tongues, we should learn to hear or understand what we're saying so that we, we begin to interpret it ourselves. And then as we do that, that would then perhaps help us to interpret gifts, but it's, it's a specific gift. But I would, always, I would generally say that an ex, uh, tongues are an expression of prayer or devotion to God, and that's generally how they would be interpreted. So I want to finish by just saying, all these gifts are good, but you need to unwrap them. We need to develop them. They're clearly gifts of the Holy Spirit, but I believe we can grow them through use. And they can change over time to become quite much more uh, broad than they have been and help us to grow in our spiritual lives. Jesus talked about talents given and he said they should be used, not buried. And we need to, if we have a gift, we need to start using it. That's what it's there for, is for us to use. Paul talks about the distinguishing marks of a true apostle that he performed with all perseverance by signs, wonders, and miracles. Suggests to me that he actually worked hard to develop those gifts. So as you receive this morning, I think I also want to ask you to make a commitment to develop the gifts that God gives you. So let, just close your eyes for a moment. I'm going to ask two questions. You can have them on the screen in case you need to see them. The Holy Spirit lives in you. So you can make Jesus known. How can you grow in this awareness? And the second thing is, what do you feel God is asking of you in this moment? So just close your eyes. You host, you carry the Holy Spirit in your lives. The Holy Spirit is in you so that you may demonstrate, show Jesus to the world. So how can you and I become more aware and grow in our awareness of his presence, of the gifts that he's giving us? And as we are here in his presence, just ask him to show you what he wants you to do in this moment. What is he asking of you in this moment? What is the next step? What can I do immediately this is over today? Is there something I can say to someone? Is there something I need to do? Holy Spirit, just drop into our hearts in your loving kindness, in your mercy, in your goodness. And release that gift. Help us to see it as you see it. And help us to be confident to express that in the way that you've made us to express it. Not comparing ourselves, but being confident in what you are doing in our hearts and lives in this moment. Take a deep breath, receive the Holy Spirit. And as you breathe him out, you are, imagine that you're breathing out this gift. He 
Imagine that you are releasing the kingdom, releasing Jesus. There is a, a mission that God has given you. He's shown you that you can know the next step, even if you don't know where you're going. Okay, you can open your eyes now. Does the worship team come, come up? I'd like you to stand up. We're going to have a look. Last slide. We're going to pick someone around us, and uh, we're going to say the grace to each other. So if you can have that last slide up, that would be great. And what we're going to be saying to one another in saying this, I want you to actually reach out and touch someone here, okay? I don't want you to uh, just be remote. This is a personal thing. So just identify someone that you're going to speak this to. Look at them and say, is that okay? You happy with that? So this is one person. I want you to hold hands or lay a hand on one another or whatever it is you feel comfortable doing. And what you're saying as you say this is, yes, please. I recognize you are a gift of God to me. Okay? So just say that to each other. Yes, please. I recognize that you are a gift of God to me. I recognize that you are a gift of God to me. Right. Okay? And then when you finish this uh, prayer or this um, declaration, I want you just to pray for one another. Okay? So, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hang on, stop a minute. Stop. Look at one another. You should know this one reasonably well. <laughs> if you have to look, just glance and go back, okay? <laughs> Ready? Right. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. Yes. You are a gift to me. Now pray. Your name.